explain how to heal twin flame separation. That's from Nilesh. <laughs> I love you, brother. Come on, answer my question. Right, twin flame. Twin flames, I don't actually think they're romantic. But just say they are romantic. You've got to cut the cords. And how you can do it is you can visualize, because you're good at that, Nilesh, Visualize a life with your twin flame and grow old together because then you've got kids together. Grow old in your 60s, 70s. So you've got to visualize your life in one meditation. And at the end, you die and then cut the cords. Then you've got a new life. That's how I used to do it anyway. <laughs> I thought twin flames were, I, I thought twin flames are your one, like one egg. And yeah, they're, they're not. They're not normally romantic. Normally, your soul threat flames are, are normally romantic. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't think it was a relate a, a romantic relationship. You're like, yeah, family. It's normally, your soulmate. But if you go through the procedure of li a life with the person uh, that you can't uh, break, and then break at the end, and then start again, have a new life. It's then it, you, you're creating a new life. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, it's, no, no, normally it's soul, soulmates are normally like that. Twin right, flames are very rare. Soul, normally like not twin flames. Not, yeah, twin flames are normally brothers and sisters or brothers and brothers. It, they, they, yeah. it, when, when, when your soul was created, you normally have maybe 50, 20, but they're all like your twin flames. Yeah. Does that help? No, that's very cool. Yeah, but, and you but, know what? I've never seen it. In, I've never seen it in that way before. Like visualized it, like kind of getting all together. I mean, the fact that you didn't get all together is a bit of a strange thing. But you know, it's cool. I like it. I'm, you know, yeah. I think it's worth for people to know that that is another form of way of doing it. So yeah, yeah I, I, th I think they did it on Doctor Who many years ago. <laughs> so I that, that's, that's how I did it. I have a question for Nilesh and you. Um, yeah. Rick and I have the same higher self. I was, why is that? What was that, sorry? Rick and I have the same higher self. Why is that? Because there is no separation. In the human 3D concept, right, we see separation. There is no separation. The idea that actually you've had a relationship with your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, is quite, you know, in some ways is a barrier, but also quite re repulsive to us as human beings. But as a vibrational being, it's just another form of creation and there is no separation. Of course, you are Rick, Rick is you. Is there, is separation on that. there is an individuality in regards to your vibration that is you, but there also is the connectedness, the one consciousness that is you as well. So. It doesn't surprise me that you both have the same higher self, that you maybe with a little bit of tweaking here and there. Because the thing is, what you need, Deb, and what Rick needs are two separate things. Because you're both on your individual journeys and you're both on your individual path. So the advice you'll be given will be very different. But why can it not come from the same source? I mean, we see Father, don't we? Yeah. We go to Father for lots of things. Isn't Father just one source? Yeah. There you go. That's my take on it. What's yours, Phil? I, I think uh, I think you've joined together to work together. It's it's like a, a job, not just a, a soulmate, but it's also a career, a spiritual career. That's what I think. And the reason we know this is because he woke up and our, our higher self was across both of us. Laying across us. Laying across both of us. Yeah. And 
when we, when we were late, sleeping. And it's a female. <laughs> you, you, you are male and female in this same sex. That'd be a bit odd if you were the other way around. <laughs> And the angels were all dancing the other night in our room. Yes. <laughs> Mother Mary was one of them. Mother Mary. <laughs> They're dancing. They were though. dancing. <laughs> I think they're dancing because we're getting close. Oh, okay. I I have to ask, what does Mother Mary look like while she's dancing? Yes. Is she in a robe? <laughs> it was it was, all, it was all black, um, which she was wearing um, dark hair. A, a very young version, I'm guessing. That's the way she came across, at least what I saw. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Don, I didn't connect with YouTube, and what he kept telling me about Casper, he was wrong. I don't have enough energy right now to fight with it. So the YouTube link, I'll, I'll, I'll upload the recording later to YouTube, all right? Sorry. I am recording it on my computer. If anybody else wants to record it too, I can give you permission. Do, I, do you want to let me have permission? I'm gonna make you co-host. You will be able to do that. It should give you permission. It says, uh, please ask the host to give you permission. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm recording it now. Nope. You are good. Oh, it's not giving me. Is it? Ask me. Oh. Yeah. Mine's recording, Dad. Oh, is this uh, okay. is this go is this going on YouTube afterwards then in case the blank yeah. yeah 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 it's not hard to upload to YouTube all right just next question Wendy it wants to know if you are you able to discuss white earth magic? Yeah. Cool. So I have had um, or overheard conversations about white earth magic and um, it's kind of come up that I should like look into it. So I'm kind of wondering exactly like what is the basis of it and how is that being used for like raising vibration or healing or is it more just grid work or um what exactly is there to know <laughs> give me your insights <laughs> you can you can do white earth magic for anything uh it's, like, it's magic but making sure it's a a good path you, you're making sure that you are using it for good so you can do it for grid work and grid work is good to do earth magic uh, you can heal earth with earth magic you i think you connect into the uh, crystalline earth by using crystalline earth to do what earth magic basically for so using the energy of the earth yeah cool and then how are you turning that around are you using it for i mean from my point of view with the healing i feel like it's like pulling in and like just using that kind of universal energy. So maybe it's one more aspect to universal energy. Use it as a tool when you need it. You can use it for anything. 
uh, it, it, it doesn't need just to be a feeling. It's just a tool. It's like a an astro tool. It's not more like a, a human tool. It's a ringing astro. You can use Earth magic uh, better than. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> It helps. Does anybody else have a question on that? <laughs> Does that lead to other thoughts on it? <laughs> uh, how do you know about earth magic? Uh, it's come up in my sessions. So, right. I, I mean, as you know, they keep giving me all these tools and I have to keep learning. So it's a, it's a progressive growth for you know, it's the next step. I, yeah, I wouldn't call it white earth, man. I'd just call it earth magic. And you're basically you're not using the universe, and you're using the earth to create the various magic uh, items, if you know what I mean. Various magic from the earth. And normally it's from the crystalline earth. So it's like where the underworld is, go lower than that, and you, you're channeling it, and then you can create, uh, create it and channel it. And, you can heal earth with it, it, you know, like a cycle. Or you can use right. it to heal the grids. You can you heal either one of the three grids, the uh, atmosphere grid, the solar grid, and the crystalline grid. So what what would you think you'd want to use it for? Well, I, I, actually, not necessarily that I wanted to. I think I just did. I ended up doing some work with a friend of mine who works with crystal skulls as well. And we ended up kind of just taking and awakening a grid. And I mean, it was like 30 different locations we went through. So I think, I think I was just doing it without really understanding what I was doing, which that happens a lot with me, but I, that's, yeah. So that's why I was kind of curious about it. I just felt, <laughs> it felt like, um, it, like you said, it's like a tool and I just, I just wasn't sure about it and it's come up that I should be like learning about it. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I feel like you're being given it by a, an aspect of you you haven't met yet. Uh, seventh, eighth dimension. Try and channel her. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, once you channel her, she'll tell you what to, how to use it best. Okay. All but right. Chris, I would say grid work, to be honest. Yeah, that's atmosphere grid work, not not the grid work outside, you know, in the uh, right, right, right. But the solar grid work, right. And I know that I've been doing like grid work out in the etheric with the galactics. I just, you know, it's like it's in my awareness, but it's not in my knowledge. If that makes sense, so it's like knowing you have third eye and not having sight. So you might have aud auditory abilities, or you might have art, like the ability to see auras, but not necessarily like see visions with your third eye. So, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm like, I know it's coming. It, it, they keep telling me it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, but it's just not here yet. So when you, when you connect to your higher aspects, your third eye will work better and you'll have uh, uh, what you call it, mind's eye better. So you'll have a better mind's eye. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, and Kath has a question She's, uh, on behalf of Fazar, who is not able to link with this call. She is known as talks with many in the Native American world. She said the dragons are very excited and chatty at the moment and says we should be starting to remember our dragon lifetimes. Her question is, does, does Phil have a question for the dragons? She can connect with them and will let us know their answer. Is that Victoria? Is that? That's Kath. Kath. <sighs> um, it's on, the, on, on behalf of Fazar. So yeah, basically she's saying that she can talk with them a lot. And, and she said they're very much around us at the minute. So if there's any questions we want her to seek out, she can. Uh, I actually connect to, to dragons as well. Right, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, you could actually do dragon language, which is amazing. Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know how it sounds, yeah. Wendy does it as well, I think. Yeah, uh, a question for dragons. Yeah, you could ask them what, what, what their, what's their job here for. 
I know, but it's a good question. <laughs> okay, I'll pass that on to her and I'll let you know what she says. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's just, I think at the minute we're all becoming aware of our own individual dragons or, or the purpose of dragons around us. It's just, and I think for me personally, the elemental world is coming alive more as well. Like yeah. when I go into a forest or wood, I'm able to see more elementals than I've ever been able to. So it feels like the veil between the worlds is changing. Mm -hmm. Our perceptions it, are, are, it's like a radio band that's getting wider. We can see, perceive more. I, I, I've, I've yeah. used dra dragon fire energy. Yeah. You have, like, have. Yeah, it's like a magical energy. And it's good for when the pain is unbearable, but you can actually hold it and it doesn't feel hot. It's, uh, it's good for healing. Excellent mm -hmm. feeling, actually. It's excellent feeling, uh, like a miracle healing. Right, okay. So what, you would direct it to an area and call the dragons in, or? No, I'd just direct the energy. You don't need the dragons in that. The energy from them will come in. What you can do is you can actually wrap yourself like a ball and then channel dragon fire uh, into your hands and then pour it into the area that needs some sort of like miracle healing in a way. Oh, that sounds interesting. Thank you very much, Will. Okay. Celia's, Celia asks, um, how do you find your twin flame? How do I define my twin flame? Yes, how do you find your twin flame? Uh, Sophie gave me my twin flame. <laughs> so. Uh, you, you normally, you don't look for it, it they just appear and normally it's a, a third party that directs you to it and uh, they have all your keywords and your codes and everything and completely can change your way of thinking to be honest. So, so, so we got my turn for it. So not necessarily um in the romantic way it's like a twin flame can be anyone twin flame is like uh like part it's like a when you were when your soul was created it's like your brother or sister it's like a, a connection from when your soul was being made so they tend to come into your life when you need help when you need uh codes or when you need i needed emotional release my art was blocked and it's been blocked since uh time I was on my own when I got like a little semi curse so I needed it unblocking and uh, she gave me two words and it unblocked me and uh, I was very emotional for about an hour and then uh, I completely changed the way I was thinking afterwards so it was like a blockage she she helped me when I needed to unblock my blockage so they're there to give you codes and keys to help you and you're there to, to likewise to do it for them uh, and it was quite, it was, I've never been through it. And it, the keys that she gave me ended up starting an awakening and it went for three weeks. And anyone who knows me knows I've completely changed to what I was uh, six months ago. But I needed that, to be honest. I was very uh, self-centered, very egoistic, and uh, her keys removed all that. But she was there to give me, but, Sophie was one who connected to me. I actually didn't like it when I first met her. I, I, I couldn't stand her, but I didn't know why. Uh, I've never had that feeling to anyone. And then when I connected, uh, we got talking and all of a sudden we, we started telling our secrets, uh, you know, the sec secrets of our early life, even past lives when she cut me head off in a past life on Orion. So we started to telling our deeper secrets. Uh, and then afterwards I started apologizing for any hate I did for any of my family members and it was very emotional and I've realized now that you, your bones become lighter you become lighter if you don't have, if you love everyone you don't have any bad feelings for any, anyone and that's what she was there to bring me into this uh, better state basically yeah. I think that answers your question or you can be like me and, and you don't, my twin flame is not incarnated in this mm -hmm. lifetime. Mine is not, I chose to not have my twin flame incarnated. And, and for me, my um, 
my best girlfriend who, I mean, we considered ourselves sisters growing up. You know, I knew her from my early high school days and um, known her all my life, but only just this year in September discovered that she's my twin flame. And um, I ended up helping her to hit her ascension point. And during one of our sessions, um, when her higher self was telling me like the relationship between us, I was, I was asking, well, you know, why is she my twin flame? Like what makes her my twin flame? And they said that um, she has what I don't have and I have what she doesn't have and the two of us together are whole. So that was a, so that's for us. That's my experience. Um, but um, yeah, definitely it's not a romantic relationship, but it's definitely a deep, strong love relationship. I mean, I would do anything for her, you know, uh, anything. So um, if you're able to, you know, heal that relationship and get it to that point. But I mean, look at it, it took us, you know, 40 years to make that discovery. So <laughs> dang it <laughs> would have been nice if it was earlier. But, um, you know, it is what it is. If that helps. Yeah. What, what was strange when uh, this twin flame left? Another twin flame I met, and that's David Starr. I don't know if you are, you should be on here. So the, it's quite strange how when one goes, the other one comes in. And these are like brothers and sisters from when I, my soul was born, basically. I even remember it, so that's how far I can go back. <laughs> can anyone see um, who your twin flame is? Can anyone say? Is it something that you feel when it comes? It's what we say to you. What we say to you is like it's got its energy. It okay. doesn't matter what the words mean, it's the energy of what we're saying to you. Uh, and you, all of a sudden you start getting, as they're giving you keys, you start to open doors and all of a sudden you see past lives and you see them with you in the past life. And all of a sudden you realize that half your past lives have been with them, or not half them, but a lot of them have been with them in different formats. Now, at the beginning, I, I, I knew my aspect was merely and then slowly I get the keys and everything like that. And then I connected to Ascending Master Atlantis and I thought that was it. Then I got connected to Raphael and I thought that was it. And only recently I've got my highest aspect, which I can't believe I went any higher. And that was a crystal source being. And that is feminine. All the others were male, <laughs> but my highest being is actually female. And that was so magical that I just felt, oh, I've got to the top. But I didn't expect that was the top. You just go slowly and then it, it, if you're not looking for it, it finds you. And once you get lighter, once you get the keys, once your bone structure gets lighter, and, and once you release all the stresses of every life you've ever had and everything, you start meeting these aspects, which can be very magical experiences. Yeah. Now that you mentioned Merlin, Merlin came by not long ago. Um, so it was quite interesting. Yeah. When I uh, when I have them moments where I feel a bit lonely because my wife died five years ago, I what I've done, I, we've got older edge, which is where Merlin is supposed to have been. And I used to just go up there with the dog and then I used to like connect with the trees. And then it didn't, I didn't feel lonely. I had all, all the trees with my friends. It, it sounds weird. Find another spiritual path as well. Find another ability. Yeah. Why think, oh, I'm lonely? Why not find something else to occupy the mind that you're thinking? To the question on behalf of her 18 year old son, Zach, he told her about two beings that came to his to him, Renak and Verek. I'm wondering if we know any more about them and what they told her son. What well, did they say anything to, to him? They, they did. Um, he actually sent me a message and was kind of excited about it and wanted to ask me about it, but I hadn't heard of them. And I can tell you what, I can read what he wrote about them if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Um, he says, uh, I figured out a small part about my energy now. It isn't my own energy, but it's at the, but it is at the same time. It happened since I have evolved in their words. 
and also I needed this for a huge awakening that's about to happen. Anyways, this new energy is because of two beings, Renak and Varric. Renak is like a larger, slender white wolf with red lines around his eyes and his eyelids. Varric is this being that's solid red, but all there is is his upper body. He's huge, like he's ripped muscular huge. So the way it is now, my energy is now split down the middle. The left half is Rena and the right is Varric. If I embrace Renek's energy, it's super warm, like a super high body heat, like a wolf. If I embrace Virik's energy, it's cold and solid. I've been to, they've been together for years, apparently, like thousands upon thousands of years. Like they've never separated. Also, I am able to merge both sides. However, they said it's hard to control and isn't recommended. So he was just found that out in a meditation. Um, my son's been very connected and I've always been open with talking with him about his um, ability to connect. Um, so I wanted to be aware of who is actually connecting with him so I can help him through his journey too when he has questions, but I've never heard of them before. I'm not getting a good feeling about it. Wrong. I'm getting a real, I'm not sure what you're getting, but I'm getting a very, very heavy feeling in my chest. <clears throat> it's dark. Um, I have seen influenced him very easily where I've had to cleanse him and reiki him and detach things in that nature. Um, we've had um, a lot of ups and downs in um, me trying to help him um, through his um, awakening. He's he's very, very powerful. He's very, very connected. So he's got a lot of things drawn to him. He's connect. I think he's connected to the Andromeda system. And I think these two might like his energy, his Andromeda energy. And it's a very high vibration, uh, a lot higher than a normal human's vibration. And I think they're attracted to his vibration, so they've gone friendly with him. Yeah, so I'd, just, I, I'd be careful. Yeah, um, I feel like, because I've shared before his photo, like he has a fractal, he has a lot of resemblance in the Jesus features, but I feel like he's very connected with him. Um, also, I was, um, when my conception with him, I was told I was never be able to have children. And I actually conceived him um against a lot of different um preventative measures and a lot of um physical doctors and validation that i wouldn't be able to have children and um well, my granddaughter was told she would never have children either and she's had she has a daughter so i mean and yeah his conception like the house that we were in was a renovated church. So that kind of like, um, and it kind of changed my life too, because I was in a dark place with that. But um, so I feel like, you know, he really was, um, you know, a special uh, mission and purpose to be here. And he's just always shown a very strong connection. Um, and uh, ever since he's, you know, been little and um, I've seen in the past few years that he has had some dark energies come around and then that's when I was trying to help steer him clear of that but he just brought this up back in July so um, and he just turned 18 in July um, so this was new and he's never really spoke about these types of um, specifics about some um, other entities so I do feel he created the reason why he's why you've had, had him basically he was he did the work to to make you conceive Basically, so he was—he's got a job here, basically, quite a big job. I would be careful on uh, these two because I think they're attracted by his Andromeda energy. It's a very high vibration. Try and get him to heal you, and if you feel all prickly, he's got Andromeda energy. We've been trying to work with that because he's because he's telling me because I'm a have healing energy a lot, and so he says that he has connective energy, and he even told me about the. Um, recently, he came to me about the golden light 
um, source energy and stuff. So he was getting introduced to that. But he says, Mom, I have energy and I can um, almost like manifest or create energy. He's like, but I can't heal. I need to have a lot of work on that. Can you work with me on that? And he feels like he's really disconnected from it, but he's very drawn to it. Mm. So when, uh, when, uh, when uh, beings uh, want to connect with him, he can't just he, he's going to be really careful. Mm -hmm. I've talked with him about that. He knows that too. So he just was curious of like who these are and then they're well, trying they're, to attach to him. So. The reason why he can't heal very well is he's blocking his healing because of these two around. So he's deliberately blocking himself. He doesn't know he's blocking himself, but he's blocking himself because these two will just uh, take the energy based on But he has the power to remove them. Yeah, he has but, a very strong, um, he always talks about how he's always on guard and like trying to protect the household too. And he says it drains him so much. He used to talk about this all the time a few years ago about how he was always trying to keep all the bad things out. And it kept him drained so much because he was using so much of his energy all the time. Bobby, it sounds to me like uh, they're siphoning off his energy and he needs to put a stop to that. He yeah, needs to say it. Yeah, he needs to, yeah, Definitely he needs to make those decisions. So um, you and I can chat offline about that. I know we've we've been talking about some other things. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the other thing is he's probably using his own energy too mm -hmm. much. Channel the energy. You don't have to use his own all the time. Yeah, he hasn't figured out how to use how to use like universal energy. We talk about universal yeah. energy, but it's really it's a skill. It's um, kind of like when we were doing spoon bending. It's learning how to collect that energy, bring it in, and then put it back out. So, um, so it, it's a skill set. And I mean, he's young, so um, and to have that much power and not have guidance, I mean, it would be great. I think if he can maybe join the group sometime and just like get additional guidance, you know what I mean? Like join on one of these calls and just, you know, listen in. He's already got the interest for it. So um, that, you know, maybe, maybe this is already his point to say, hey, this is the beginning of my starting of my journey. So like really starting it, learning how to protect himself, protect his aura, protect his field, not let, you know, vampires, you know, siphon, attach cords to him, sending his own energy out or using his own energy. And I mean, that was my, and I literally had to go on that same journey a year ago. So, I mean, because I'm like on a fast track too, and maybe he's on the same, on the same kind of a treadmill, <laughs> fast track, run, run. Right. I mean, I try to talk to him about all that because I'm very open with him and about learning Wonderful. how to ground and protect because, you know, I am have a lot of things drawn to, you know, around me. And so yeah. I'm sure he knows how to do that. And he was very good at that too, at one point. But um, I think because it's coming from mom and he got into those teenage years that, you know, he, he'll listen. And like, if someone else says exactly what I say, then he's like, oh, okay. But if it comes from mom. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Uh, the they have a hard time kind of grasping hold of that concept. So. What you could do is ask him just by intent to have a blessing of the goddesses of the underworld, which is the light side, the white side, and they'll get rid of these two. I'll just clear them out. Thank you. I just wanted to get uh, everyone else's opinion. So, cause I can see kind of the duality there of them coming in. So I wanted to see if what, my- What you've got to think, out, think of is he's getting drained and he's got two like invisible friends why is he getting drained and it's obvious yeah. in it yeah i think they, they've been with him for a few like around him but i think they were just became you know comfortable enough that they finally revealed themselves their true selves to him so it reminds to that it's probably yeah. to it's probably to their detriment that they brought themselves up into vision because <laughs> now they're going to be gone <laughs> yeah. it, it reminds me of a fox foxes do that don't they make themselves invisible on the prey and slowly wingle in. So they, they, they do sound wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you want, I can ask you to travel tonight and see what I can do. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. I think that was the last question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I have a cough. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> Question. Can my cough go away? <laughs> healing? For healing. Okay. 
What's your What's your first name? Alex. Alex. Okay. What's the question? You want some healing? He wants healing. Yeah. Okay. All right. What I'm doing? I'll put my hand out. The other hand is a tuning hand. Yeah. So I'm going to send it to you. Hey, Alex, we went uh, into your lungs and went into your sinuses and into your ears and into your throat. And Archangel Raphael over there did his healing as well. So I think you're pretty much uh, taken care of there. Thank you. You're welcome. Actually, I feel better already. <laughs> drink, a, drink a lot of water in the next couple of days because it goes on for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely will. Thank you. You've, you've been zapped. <laughs> <laughs> and it already feels better. Good. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. For, for anyone watch, watching this YouTube, I just didn't just heal one. I heal, anyone who watches this YouTube will can get healing. I, I also gave awakening codes, so just see awesome. what happens. Awakening I, codes are out there, too. I ended up doing some light language in the background. I don't know if you were able to pick that up on the mic or whatever, but it just kind of just, just showed up. I saw, I, it's kind of like I saw the hand and all of a sudden it was like, boom, it like came through. So, so I was going to say, um, I know that you were doing more for j just him because I could feel it in my chest. Cause you know how I've been sick for the past three and a half weeks and I still am. And I could just feel that heaviness being pulled into my, like out of my chest and like up. And I, I even like was coughing, you know? So <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting it out. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Yeah. If you want a second one, just watch YouTube. One. <laughs> <laughs> Else we, play, we played a video of his hands like this, <laughs> non-stop, and you get healing 24-7. I like to comment, Debbie, because yeah. uh, you have healed me before for yes. the pancreatic thing. And I asked my doctor for um, MRI, and then it showed in the MRI that there was an infection, but it is already healed. Yeah. It showed, it showed that you had one it that was healed. It showed I had, but already healed. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. I have talked to the, and also last night, it's my chakra. There's something stuck in there. I have to... I don't know, voice it out or do something. My question is, what will I voice out? What <laughs> there it is there, I can feel it. There's Ooh. I've got an idea, Deb. Shall I show you mine? <laughs> yes. Put your hand out. Visualize a pill on the hand. Channel the universe energy to fix your, your throat. Roll it mm -hmm. as though it's physical. Mm -hmm. Visualize okay. it, bring the energies in, and mm -hmm. then take it and take it and have a glass of water and drink it every day. Oh, okay. It's like a placebo, but it's an energy one. So you actually bring okay. in the universe energy. Universal fix. energy, and I'll make a pill of it, a, yeah. a capsule. Yeah, it's take about ten, five or ten minutes creating this pill mm -hmm. in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can okay. you can bring source energy if you want into it, universe energy. But think of the ingredients that you need to mm -hmm. actually fix your throat. So you can add these ingredients by channeling them, and then mm -hmm. put it in your mouth, and then drink drink water, and then a, a real drink, a, a real glass of water. A drink of water. Yeah. I've I've done that before, Phil. From your recommendation on that previously, it's yeah. amazing. It works. I mean, come on, this is Archangel Raphael telling you how to get a quick <laughs> heal, right? So use his guidance and do it. It works. Yeah, know that it works thing. just like you just felt that healing that he gave you that's yeah it's awesome <laughs> thanks Bill. don has this acid reflux condition that he's had for years i've asked and received healing for this but it always seems to return any solution 
creator said, yes, stop eating spicy food. <laughs> I, don't oh, I, I love. Oh, I like spicy food. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Shall I tell you mine? I, I'm just trying to channel if I'm allowed to, <laughs> but I'll say it anyway. I create an entity from angelic light that eats acid, and then I put it in the area to eat the acid and relieve alkaline. And I have done that a few times. Uh, to patients, but I don't tell them that much because everyone thinks entities are very dark and they're bad. But if you create it from angelic light and visualize it in your hand and then put it into the area, and as a life death program, so it doesn't uh, overwhelm, uh, you can do it that way. I wasn't sure whether I'm allowed to, <laughs> but I've done it now, so there you go. There we go. All right, Davina wants to uh, rip this can her. She wants a healing. Mm. I'm going right to your back. Something going on with your hips. It was a, um, it was like a, like a cyst or something in your lower back that was dissolved. It was on one, between one of your discs and your hips. You need adjusting. here ovaries We're doing healing in your ovaries and um, looks like there's really really swollen really large and large there. Almost like he's putting an ice pack on you. Does that feel better? Yes. Just doing it in your breasts as well. Thank you so much. That's really cool. Um, uh, Deb, I've, I've been in other Zoom sessions where I've experienced um, your healing on people, but for whatever reason, maybe because it's a smaller group, um, I was actually doing a lot of like transmuting, like clearing, like so assisting, even though I was like kind of like doing stuff on my phone, <laughs> you know, because the focus of Davinia is on you and that, that healing was going and Phil was, you know, kind of putting his energy out there too, of course. And um, I was just like, for me, energetically, um, it ends up being like breath work. It's almost like yawning and letting go. So I like I was moving that energy too. So um, I just wanted to let you know in case you see me making big yawns in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. But it's kind of nice because it's a very visual of you know energy being moved, and you can see it physically, like you know going through the body. So. Um, so when you go back and look, if you see me kind of yawning or hiding my face because <laughs> I'm yawning, that's what that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's different for me because uh, he shows me what parts of the body are are um, getting healed and shows me what he's doing. And sometimes it's scary. <laughs> um, and in like past lives, um, sometimes it's like I ask him not to show me the blood and gore, like, you know, Sometimes they'll show me when they get shot or you know what they what's happening and how they lived, what lives they lived, things like that. Wow, yeah, that's uh Yeah, I don't want to know how you know, sometimes they'll show me how they died and, and it, at the beginning of it I didn't I, I just didn't want to know. I I, quite, I don't want to see that. 
Yeah, let's just get to the healing part where we're taking okay. care of what happened. <laughs> Don't show me that it, and they stopped. So, that, okay, so I know they died at this. So what, uh, tell me why they died, if they want to know that part. And some, you know, some people don't want to know, so thank God. Yeah. Well, how did I die? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to see that, but here's what yeah. the words are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Think, I, think, I think there's something wrong with me, because I do want to see that. <laughs> 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 you're Phil, one of those. Phil, I was going to say, um, I probably would not opt out for that, but, you know, I mean, it depends. I mean, sometimes it could well, probably be really, like, really gore. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I, that's never bothered me. <laughs> no, I would not have Rick scan me to find out what my past lives were. I don't care. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> yeah, Rick keeps saying, well, find out some more of my past lives. We just found out that he was um, Doc Holliday. Oh, Doc Holliday. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> Uh, one of my experiences, Deb, was I was doing someone's past life while I was healing them, and I went up to 800 AD. They were fighting threat France against Scotland, and I, I thought I'm on an horse here. And then the person in charge asked me to charge, and I thought I want to go back. <laughs> like, I, <don't, laughs> I thought, am I in this scene? I thought I was this, uh, using, uh, I, you know, the eye mind, but no, I was in the scene. And I thought, would I get, would I end up being a coma in the healing room? I thought, I want to go back. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Did, I, don't, I didn't know what would happen if I died in the scene, doing, doing Astro, you know, actually going back into, into his uh, timeline. It was very weird. So I must have been part of his timeline, which is very yeah, crazy. I've been brought back for people like to King Arthur's court. I've been brought back to um, Rome in the chariots and uh, pirate ships and of course the wild west several times and um uh down to to lemuria to um atlantis and um for a while there i kept going to the london fire of 1666 is it or 1660 i can't remember i didn't even know there was a great london fire never heard of it until I, all these past lives and um and, and you know, the history, what they wrote about it, there were a lot more people that died in that fire than they said. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I mean, it, how many times do you do a past life and then you Google it? <laughs> I do that all the time. Afterwards, mean, they, afterwards, I've Googled it. I, I've done it because I didn't know France and uh, Scotland had a, had a war in 800 AD until well, I thought, I'll Google that, I'll see if it's real or uh, we got the year right. And I did. Well, I did a. Um, I, I had someone do, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't Davina, it was someone else before her uh, that, that does our channeling for us. Um, he, he did one of those uh, hypnosis with me and he, yeah, he did one of my past lives and um, I was George, a blacksmith, and it was a war of 12, 1266 or something like that. And I didn't, he, he, he Googled it and there was a war then. <laughs> I was the only man in a village in somewhere in England. <laughs> well, I can't remember, mm -hmm. but because it was like three or four years ago that he, that he did this hypnosis on me. And I, my, I was the only man because I was 40 years old. So I was too old to go to war. Mm -hmm. and I, so I was the only, and I was a blacksmith, I guess. Wait, did you just say 40 was too old to go to war? Back then. What? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it took 15 year olds. They didn't want a 40 year old. Gosh. You, you weren't creating a fire in 1660. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to create it. <laughs> no. God, I hope not. It was a great London fire. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> That's amazing, Deb. <laughs> God, I hope I didn't. <laughs> so. Mm pretty interesting so that was it i think that was do i have any more oh, okay here's a question have you heard of people saying they removed their chakra system is that possible if i've so, heard of, i've heard of it but i don't believe it <laughs> um no it, it's not possible if, if they don't have a chakra system they are not human they are not spiritual they are they are not um 
they're probably a robotic or something like that. So, no, it's not possible. It's like the body's energy field, isn't it? Circulating around. You need the chakra system to circulate it. Yeah, they're not. They are. They're not a. They're not an energy. Even energies have some sort of. Energies are higher beings. They're higher dimensional beings. You know what I mean? Mm. They were. They're not of the light. They're not of. Then they are. You know what I mean? Let I me. Mean, it's our creator, but say it. Say it. So it makes sense and I'm not babbling. I call them empties. <laughs> I've called them empties since I was a child. The empties. Like a video of people and they're not real. Yeah. Not, not quite real. No. Yeah. Can we do another one? What time? Scan and the healing. Where are scans? I get the download. You you do the hands. Okay. <laughs> I'll throw his body. That's the first thing that's being healed. Is there something going on with your blood? Something. Low, low iron, low. He's doing a correction to his blood. He's, uh, he's got low. He's got low iron, very low levels. I'm not sure if he's had issues with cancer or in the past. Yes. Okay. And, uh, he's he's trying to get your levels balanced with your blood. You've got some vitamins missing. So he's, creator's going to pump the needed vitamins and minerals that you're lacking from treatments that you've had. He wants you to drink water and or juices um, in a lot, as much as you can. Just purify your water, you know, by doing it yourself. You don't have to go out and buy special water. Um, but he's going to be putting in the nutrients that you need in your blood. He will be doing that. Go out in nature. In your yard. A few times a day. Just go out and get the energy from the sun. And you, know, you don't have to sit in the sun you know, directly. Get it through the window if it's too much for you. But go out in the fresh air, put your feet in the grass, ground yourself, to drink some water, a lot of water. He's put some energy in you, that's going to be fortifying you. It's going to go on for several days, okay? So I say my bit. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't diagnose. I'm not a doctor, but I, I did feel bladder problems uh, and out of balance, energy out of balance. And what I would do is get a glass of water every day, like that, fill it up, and just send love energy into it. So think of the moment, the best moment you've ever had in your life. Put your hand over it and just visualize it going into the water and then drinking it yeah i do think you need clearing uh, like a clear out so yeah i agree with that hmm? do, you want to ask? Do, you, do you see anything with regards to my eyesight my vision is that you Doug? well no 
but um, before we came here, you you, made, you asked for certain experiences. So if we don't see it, that's something you ask for. Okay. We even are we even more concerned with your energy balance. Uh, if that's your reason your ear is because of your eyesight, the only way you can might be able to try some it is trying to connect to your brain and try and reprogram your eyes, try and flush them out. It might be just a, a, a reason why you're having that. It's, this is why you, you've got to experience that. But you can try it uh, by clearing, basically. So you, you like flush your eyes out with uh, white light, but then connect to your brain if you're an healer and try and tell your brain that you need to have a, have a look at your eyesight. I can't, I, I can't guarantee it, but that's the way I would do it. I, I, I should have wear, wore glasses 20 years ago and I'm still not wearing so. And that, because that's what I do, I, I try and, I try and cheat the system, try and get your brain to work better on your eyesight, because your brain can fix most things in your in your body. So try and connect to your brain, and also use uh, and try and push your eyes. The eyes work better. Yeah. Uh, put your put your two hands here, and just visualise the energy going through, and then connect to your brain to say, look, can, can I can you you know you're not doing your job quite well? Can you look look at your eyes and try and fix them? Okay. But, but as Deb said, it is probably an experience you need to go through, but uh, I'm supposed to have that experience, but I'm, I'm, I don't agree with it. So. Right. <laughs> so I... and, and, you know, and, you know, once this healing happens through with the blood and, and the, um, all the minerals, your eyesight may be part of that that comes back because of the minerals that um, mm -hmm. you're lacking. So that could be part of it as well. And I'm getting that information, too. So wait until all of the healing happens that that's completed. That could um, be. We we drink um, uh, uh, RO water that's been stripped of uh, minerals. Is that an issue? No. 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 It's well, just uh, clean water. Hmm. Let's try and send energy into it. Love energy. Best part of your ever life. Send it in. Because then you, you're giving uh, you're giving a, an eye vibe into your balance system, eye vibration. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's fine. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, uh, uh, Bobby said she wanted to share something. Is she still here? I think she's there. I'm still here. Um, I try not to, you know, overpower anybody or what they want to um, take care of during the session, but um, I've been trying to be really reserved, but it won't let me leave without sharing this um, for it's meant to resonate with some of you here. Um, I was supposed to share that um, today I am supposed to, I was thinking I was going to be somewhere else today. When I seen the post of the group session, I thought, oh no, I'm gonna miss that. And then um, I said, but you know, I have to be in this other place. Um, we're laying to rest um, some family members, but because I've been ill, I didn't wanna go and risk that. So I was very upset about that. I didn't know how my day was gonna go, but then I remembered that the session was going on. Um, in this session, um, there was many things that um, resonated, that I resonated with, like things that Victoria were talk, was talking about. Um, there was coming some uh, um, clarity on that, um, just some more confirmations. Uh, things like I was gonna ask for a healing possibly, but I was like, no, you know, I'm pretty much getting over my stuff, let everybody else get their healing. And then Wendy's son came on and said, I have that cough. And I was like, oh, thank you. You know, So he asked for that and it resonated with me because I needed that. Um, when Alina was talking about feeling alone and going through an awakening, I could really resonate with those things as well um, because many people have talked about that and I've experienced it drastically as well. And um, having those walls about those people that you're running into that you can't really communicate with. So 
um, that was really resonating. Um, so it just was kind of, I'm sharing this because it goes to show that no matter what we think or what we think we have to control, there's always a reason that everything happens, even though it's a bittersweet that I can't be there at the funeral. Like this was more important for me to be here in this moment to be able to understand the things that are going on and to get those confirmations, those signs, those synchronicities. So that way it helps myself be um, more in line with with who I am and in my journey. And so much that we want to do is control um, all, every aspect. And um, somebody I was talking about patience too. I think. Um, Possibly Victoria might have brought that up about being patient. I had a lesson about always being patient because we want to always do, 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 do. And we have to really stop and live in that moment because um, we're always trying to go on to that next thing that we think that we have to do. In reality, we're missing out on with that intimate moment that we're supposed to be learning and that's why cycles repeat itself because we miss that moment because we're either living in the past of what happened or we're always wondering about what's the future instead of missing out about what's going on now so a lot of these things are coming to me today and um i had a lot of like um insight and connectivity like the back ache and i was like someone's got a lot of tension in their back in this group i don't know who it is i'm not gonna say nothing but i'm just gonna wait and then um davina came in and you're like you're back you know it's like right there and i'm like oh as soon as you started healing there it started going away you know so um you know i connected with a lot of you today on a very um deep energetic level and i appreciate everything that you do everything that you bring to bring to us um, to wake up that knowledge but um i wanted to share this um not actually i didn't <laughs> i gotta put that i did not want to have to share this but it wasn't letting me leave i kept going please i have something to share can i say something <laughs> but i was being missed so i was like well maybe i shouldn't but i'm like no i have to say this because um spirit won't let me not <laughs> so um but i just wanted to say um that i hope Hope that resonated with someone to for a little bit more understanding and trying to maybe release and take our hands off the wheel for a minute and just let it be and enjoy that moment because i had a lot of clarity and reflection during my time of illness here and uh and that's some of the perception that i've uh, been given and was told to pass on to so that's what i wanted to share okay. thank, <laughs> you. thank you thank you Right. Thank you. Is it the Atlantis Halo now? Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you. This is the this is what I was taught uh, in Atlantis when I was ascended master, and I brought it in about ten years ago when I was getting attacked by uh, demonic energy, and it cleared it. So uh, I've been using it healing twice a week for 20 years, well 10 years sorry when I started using it when I was told about it and what you've got to do is you've got to visualize the eyes closed a uh, halo above your head uh, it can be about three foot remember the shackles can be quite high up so they can be fat, ten foot a big white light beaming white light and an angelic white light the flames that come from the halo are angelic flames so they might change color depending what you need and it, it comes all the way down to your crown chakra now if it stops at a certain point it means that you need this uh, at that point it's a grounding technique it's also an healing technique it can also remove entities attachments it can do the full lot so when it comes down to your head it goes up again two inches and then it go, uh, and then it goes down four inches and it goes and it keeps on going up two inches down four inches nice and slow so it should be white light. If it changes color by your mind's eye, that's fine. So it keeps on going till it's in your throat chakra. Throat chakra, and it, it can give energy into your, all your chakras, like a figure eight balancing act. So it can actually tune you about uh, energy field as well. So let it go four, inch, uh, four inches down, two inches up, four inches down, two inches up. Let it go nice and slowly. You might see different colors. Make sure your eyes are closed. It's good with meditation music if you want to do this in the future. Future, And then it goes up to your root chakra and it's uh, removing anything that's, uh, that shouldn't be around you. So it keeps on going down. Visualize it, visualize it. And then it's going down your legs, four inch, uh, two inches up, four inches down, two inches up, four inches down, till, till it gets to your 
to your feet. And it goes to your feet. And then channel moon energy into your crown chakra and just push anything that's, anything that's coming to your aura field, any negativity it's brought out, right down to where your halo is and then down into the earth. And just let it absorb. And just give it a few minutes, just rest a few minutes. And then after this, just drink a glass of water. It was a bit quick that, but that should be okay. Oh. Right. And remember, if it stops at a certain point, just let, just let it stay there. It just, it's just clearing. Thank you, everyone. Anyway, thanks. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks. Thank we'll you, see thank you. you. Bye. Um, Bye. Love till next time. Bye. -bye.